Hey, welcome back to Bear's Grid. On this channel, we simplify educational tech. In today's video, I'm gonna share my top 10 must-have iPad Pro apps that you need for school. I've been using an iPad for the best part of four years teaching mathematics uh, at school. Uh, and so these apps that I'm gonna be using, I've accumulated uh, a list of apps, uh, particularly useful during this period of blended learning, online learning. Make sure you watch to the end so I can share my top 10 apps that I'm using. So the first app is a massive productivity app uh, and not the way you think it might be, but it's this one here, okay? This is Hover Time, it's a hover timer. And what I do with this is I don't use it as a standalone app. So I'll, I'll go down to the timer section, uh, I'll choose the time that I want here and then I'll press on start. This gives me a floating widget right here on um, the home page. In fact, I can move this around any four corners and I can pinch and zoom as well. So if I have that, oh, I can have that open with, let's say my notes, for example. Okay. And I can have this floating around. Now I never use this as a standalone app. I always use it uh, in conjunction when I'm doing multitasking. This is why it's such a powerhouse of a productivity app because I set timers for my students regularly. Okay. For them to complete or accomplish micro tasks, micro challenges for them to feel accomplished. So I will set a task for example what I regularly do is I'll jump on to um, you know a task that I'm teaching them maybe uh, this task here this question here okay copy and complete this table uh, and then I'll set a timer so I might set them a timer let's say for example I'll go back to the stop clock and I might set a timer for three minutes and so when they hit that target okay for three minutes when they hit that target uh, obviously they feel achieved accomplished and for myself as well I can keep a track of time so it's a productivity app for me as well as my students so that's the first one hover timer I've made a uh, tutorial on this uh, application go ahead and check it out for yourself I link it in the description below so go ahead and check that out The next app that I'm talking about is of course, Google Meet. Now with Google Meet, uh, this is an essential app, it's a must have app. I always collaborate. So let's go ahead and start a meeting here. Start an instant meeting. And here we go, we've joined the meeting. I can go ahead and share this code out. This is not how I use Google Meet, however. How I use Google Meet is I connect it to my MacBook. Uh, I'd, I'll start the meeting on my MacBook and then I'll join the same meeting on my iPad and then I can share my screen here. Okay, I can share my screen on the iPad and then that way the students can see whatever I'm broadcasting on my iPad screen. That's useful because that leads me to uh, deliver my lesson. So for example, I will now go on to sharing my screen. start talking about the next application. The next application is Calculate 84. So I can go ahead and share this with my students while I'm teaching online and they can see everything. And because this is the iPad, I can touch here. Okay, and they can benefit from my touch input. So Calculate 84 is a graphics display calculator. And what I can do with this is I can uh, draw all my functions. So if I go to the Y, I can input all of my functions here and then I can go ahead and graph it. When I graph this, my students can see. None of my applications do I use as standalone applications. I always use them uh, when I'm multitasking. So what I'll typically do here is I'll be sharing a lesson and then at the same time, I would go to the dock and I'm gonna hold down and I'm gonna float my calculator 84. And then that way I can do my calculations as well as sharing my class notes. Students can see the floating app and they can see my class notes. I can screenshot this and put it into my notes. So how do I screenshot? I don't do the typical way of screen of doing a screenshot by holding down the power button and the volume button. What I do is using the Apple Pencil because it's always in my hands. What I do using the Apple Pencil, I'll come in from one of the corners. So here, look, I'll come from the bottom corner and that takes a screenshot. And now very easily what I can do is I can, this, I don't know how this works. This is amazing. But if you look closely to this screen grab, look, it has, like contrast detection because it's stopping at that black border for the calculator and then if I carry on it will stop at the white border you see that I can do the same thing on all four corners so I'm going to come up here and you see what is done it snaps it has definitely has some contrast detection okay I don't know what um, sort of iPad OS update that came in 
but you see how it snaps onto, look at that. That is a perfect screenshot of the calculator and I can save that to my photos. And then if I get rid of that, I can bring that in from here. So I can show the students, hey guys, what I'm really talking about, what I really want you to focus on is this intersection here. That's gonna be the solution, okay? to our problem here that does lead me very nicely a segue into um, my fourth application which is actually good notes the reason i stuck with good notes and why i think it's the best out of all of the note taking applications is because of this it's it's the organization okay it's the file structure now this file structure is something similar to what you'd see you know windows um, explorer okay file explorer because it allows me to have an infinite number of folders and files okay so i can have a folder within a folder within a folder so if i go here you can see i've got 2019-20 uh, my personal stuff 2020-21 if i click on that i've got folders within here and then within my um let's say grade 10 folder here look i've got more folders within my functions folder i can have more folders I do have actually have the summative folder. So we can have a very productive organizing your files within folders. So this is fantastic. This is why I use GoodNotes. GoodNotes for me is, oh man, it's my go-to. It's my go-to note application. After that was going to be Apple Notes. And I use Apple Notes when I need to quickly sketch down something, okay, mainly my YouTube videos or some information that I need to um, have quick access to and I don't want to organize it in Good Notes. So I'll quickly go here and I'll scribble down something. So another reason as to why I use Apple Notes is because it allows me to scan documents. So on a fly, if I need to scan an ID or I need to scan a receipt or I need to scan someone's work all right, or a letter, I can go ahead and I can click on the camera button and I can scan document. This allows me to scan a document, okay? Uh, and then I can go ahead and share that where I need to share that. I've covered five apps so far. Stick around or share the rest of the apps. If you've been following my G Suite tutorials, okay, you'll know from my videos that most of the times I recommend using the web-based um, program as opposed to the dedicated app. Now, no surprise here, my Google Classroom is actually a shortcut to Safari browser. In uh, iPad OS 13, Apple updated to a desktop class browser. And so therefore I'm starting to use my applications through the browser. I don't have any other app from the G Suite because I tend to use all of them through the web. Now, let me tell you why I'm using uh, Classroom through the web. The interface is far more fluid. It's so much more better using it on the internet. And then on top of that, the reason I'm using um, Google Classroom on the web is because I frequently upload work. And when I upload work, unfortunately, that app uh, has a bug in it where it doesn't allow you to upload or export work from your iPad. It did used to work two years ago, but I don't know why it stopped working. And so now I'm using Classroom on the web. What is Google Classroom? If you're not familiar with Google Classroom, it's a, a bunch of classes, a virtual classes that you upload all of your work and students go and see all your class notes. They can review from there and do everything from the, the cloud. Now, let me go to a tutorial here. This is just my uh, YouTube tutorial class. I've just made this up as a demo. You have the stream where you announce all your, well, where you put all your announcements. I could go ahead and type something in here and add an announcement. Then I've got my classwork tab. My classwork tab is where I can create assignments for my students. What's brilliant about this is when I create an assignment, I can create a quiz, I can create a question, I could upload material to the classroom. And if I've got multiple classes, multiple sections of the same year group, I can reuse my posts. So if I posted something for grade nine A, I can reuse that post for grade nine B and C, for example. So, and it allows you to organize these in different topics as well. So you've got feedback one, feedback two, you can have an infinite number of topics. These are just examples. If you do want to see an in-depth tutorial or Google Classroom, go and check it out on YouTube. I don't know if I've actually got one on my channel. I've done a few Google Classroom uh, tutorials. Go ahead and check those out. So Classroom is a must-have essential app because our school, our institution, 
is a G Suite for Enterprise School. This is what we use. This is our platform, um, educational platform that we use for sharing resources. Okay, all of our lessons, our um, you know assignments and everything is here. Also with Classroom, when you do here, for example, look, if I add and I create an assignment, I can create a, you know, a, an assignment with a point score and a schedule date as well. And the students can push that schedule date uh, into their Google Classroom so they can have a reminder that they need to complete that assignment. Okay, so that leads me now to my next app, my sixth app on this platform. And that's Yoink. Now I've done a tutorial on Yoink. Yoink is copy and paste on steroids. I'm gonna show you why I actually I use this, okay? So I'm gonna show you something here. I'm gonna go back to, remember all of these applications, they all interact with each other. And that's the beauty of this ecosystem, that each of the apps, they interact with each other and you can use them in conjunction when you're multitasking. So let me show you typically what I would do, how I would use GoodNotes, Yoink, and then Classroom. So if I'm over here, and I've made a fantastic lesson here. And I'm like, oh yeah, I need to share this with my students on, on a Classroom. This is how I do it. I go ahead and I export. I'm, I'm just gonna export this page. I'm gonna go ahead and export this page as a PDF. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export this straight to Yoink, okay? So that opens up, this adds the item into Yoink as a PDF. Yoink is like a floating directory of all your copy and pasted items. Um, it is not only a floating directory, it is an actual directory in the Files app. Now, how do I use that? Then I go to Google Classroom and let's say I want you to add that, I want to upload it to one of my classes. So let's just go down to YouTube Tutorials. And I'm gonna go to my classroom, I'm gonna create, uh, let's just say a material, I'm gonna upload a material. Now this is how I do it. I go to Add and I'll go to files and at the same time I'll have Yoink open up as a floating widget here yeah so I'm basically side loading this and then what I'll do is I'll just grab that exponential equations and drop it into uh, my file upload now if I get rid of Yoink you can see here I've created a material I could you know call this whatever I want to call it and then give them instructions hey download you know go ahead and complete this exercise blah 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 review your class notes i didn't have to save it anywhere else i've just saved it on yoink and i've i've basically grabbed it yoink i've taken it from the yoink directory and uploaded it straight here go check out the tutorial that i've done in yoink it's an amazing application i think i'm now on the seventh app now or is it this i've totally lost count one two three four five six yeah yoink was the seventh app here's another application that i i use it's my script calculator Okay, my script calculator is fantastic. Again, it's not a single use app. I always use this in conjunction with my lessons. Okay, when I'm doing my live lessons. So I'll, I'll be doing this. Hey, I'm doing my, my work. Okay, I've come into one of these questions. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and have um, my script calculator as a, as a floating app. And then from here, I can go ahead and, you know, solve some questions here. Okay, so one over 16 equals to whatever. I could go ahead and copy, you know, use that number in another calculation. So now I'm going to say two to the power of, you know, one over 16 will give me blah, 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 blah. I can take this. I can multiply that by, you know, four, so on and so forth. So I'm doing the calculations live. So instead of me actually using, because what I would do here then is I would normally use, um, I would have my calculator app, calculate 84. So instead of me doing the actual calculation, I can just do it natively or more intuitively, let's say, on my script calculator. 2x equals 8. So 2 times x equals 8. It will tell me that my variable is 4. So basic linear uh, equations, it can solve it for you. But I usually use it on the fly when I'm doing calculations and I need to show my mental recall to my students. So I'll use this to show them, hey, what I've just done there, guys, is, you know, I've I'm multiplying it by four to get to eight and so on and so forth. So my script calculate calculator is fantastic and I use it on the fly when I'm teaching my lessons. Okay, essential app number eight. This is the most boring app <laughs> that is on the list and it's um, my mail client. Okay, this is Apple's native mail client. And if you can see here, I've got all of my um, email accounts here. I've got my Hotmail, I've got my Gmails, I've got my 
school account here okay my work account okay my org account so everything is listed here on this one mail client and it's fantastic because i can just organize all of my emails i'm regularly i mean constantly coming into this mail client to check i mean we've always got i've got another mail here now constantly got uh, emails coming in okay morning afternoon evening emails all is coming in now if you look at my email client there are zero notifications pending because i'm constantly going in and clearing out uh, and organizing my emails okay so i don't have any pending responses that i need to get to okay i can organize it what's brilliant as well like any mail client you can organize what you need to organize and archive what you need to archive the 10th application is a no-brainer it's safari why is safari on my list and why shouldn't it just be you know a default app i'll tell you why because a lot of the applications on the ipad you can download from the app store so for example i could go ahead and i could download the google doc you know docs i could go ahead and download google docs however i don't i don't download it uh, because i found that safari as a desktop class browser is my go-to yeah so i'll use google classroom i'll use docs i use everything so if i type in here gmail uh, i would come here and i would use from uh you know this menu here i would use all of my g suite applications on the web okay i'm not using them as downloading applications give it a try yourself go ahead and use safari to load your google docs or your google slides or your google sheets or your google classroom and you may actually be surprised that you'll have a better user experience using safari so if you're a student uh, you're in school you're in college you're at uni you're teaching these are my top 10 uh, applications that I'm using on a daily basis, okay, that help me have a better workflow. Go ahead and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.